Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and I recently discussed how Boris Johnson's actions since winning a large majority in the general election could be read as not just an intention to leave the transition period at the end of 2020 without any serious deal with the EU, but even that he could commit the UK to a hard Brexit much sooner. Well, in this video, I'd like to discuss how that same cliff edge hard Brexit could yet emerge, but from the EU Parliament this time. But if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, as Remainers, one of the things we've tried to explain to people over the past few years is just how well the EU protects its members. This currently includes us, but that is about to change. But there are still going to be EU citizens living and working in the UK next year, even if that citizenship is going to be ripped away from tens of millions of us who wish to retain it. It's one of the reasons I gave for Boris Johnson being unable to get a deal with the EU in 2020. His stated policy is to remove the rights from not just UK citizens, but any EU citizens in the UK as well. He's also begun the legislative process to do this, so it isn't just talk, he's actually going ahead with it. And the EU will simply not agree to a deal, certainly not a permanent deal with the UK, that compromises the rights of EU citizens. So in the past few weeks, various EU representatives have been warning that Boris Johnson may be breaching the withdrawal agreement with what he's been doing since the general election and what he was promising before the general election, I mean, if he does, and, and the EU Parliament suggests that this is happening, then we don't actually leave the EU into a transition period at the end of next month, but into the hard Brexit chaos discussed in the government's own report entitled Operation Yellowhammer. And when it comes to a hard Brexit, the British Civil Service have already said that we cannot prepare for this eventuality by the end of 2020. One more year is not enough time. So we're not even close to being prepared for the beginning of the year, despite Johnson pissing away billions of pounds on apparently preparing for just this eventuality. So Guy Verhofstadt was explaining about a week ago that the problems that Boris Johnson's government is creating for EU citizens in the UK would mean that the EU Parliament, which still has to formally ratify the withdrawal agreement, could vote against the deal. Now, it has to be said that the EU Parliament is like any other Parliament, including Westminster in the UK. It is comprised of individuals who will have their own various reasons for voting for or against a motion. In fact, unlike with a National Assembly, the EU Parliament has way too many factions for anyone other than a full-time observer to possibly tell how they would react to certain things and I am far from a full-time observer. They're made up of politicians, like any other, and mostly under the control of a national party's leadership, just like MPs in Westminster. So, would the EU Parliament really vote against this agreement? Well, on the one hand, it, if it looks like Johnson isn't going to hold up his end of the bargain, and he's not, then I suppose it's possible they'd certainly be in their rights to say that they will not agree a deal with a government that is abusing its own citizens and leaving them without any immigration status. I mean, agreeing to something that will make their own citizens homeless and unemployed and stranded in a foreign country is not going to be a good look for them. That being said, if Johnson really wants to do that, then voting against the agreement doesn't stop it. It will simply be making a stand, but it's a stand that has other costs as well. I mean, a no-deal Brexit is bad for everyone in the EU. The UK mostly, of course, but also the other nations of the EU to a lesser extent. And Boris Johnson may not be unhappy with the EU Parliament voting against the agreement because then he gets his no-deal Brexit, but he also gets to blame the EU for the no-deal chaos that follows. This is despite the fact that he and other Brexiteers have said that we will absolutely cope without a deal, no problem at all. But what will matter to those MEPs in the European Parliament is not so much who Boris Johnson blames, but who their own citizens blame. So it may well be that this statement from Verhofstadt is a political statement intended to get action from the British government, 
but ultimately without any teeth if MEPs are not actually considering voting against it at all. I mean, what Verhofstadt wants is, and what the EU Parliament in general would want, is for the right to settlement to be almost automatic, that the Home Office has to come up with reasons to reject an application rather than that there has to be reasons to stay. This is, after all, what the British government promised until recently. Uh, even hardline Brexiteers were saying, of course, we want EU citizens to be able to stay. There shouldn't be a problem with that. In fact, government ministers are still saying that they want EU citizens to stay, despite denying many of them this right and holding lots more in an uncertain legal limbo. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't think that Boris Johnson will do anything to further guarantee EU citizens' rights. He's much more likely to remove ones that currently don't seem to be under threat. I mean, there's just not the enormous political pressure on him to concede anything. Um, but there is actually quite a lot of pressure to engineer a hard Brexit if he can as soon as possible. I mean, like I said, it would not displease Johnson's backers his supporters to see the EU Parliament shoot down the withdrawal agreement and leave us without any EU deal on February the 1st. So I imagine that this is a political calculation on the part of MEPs as to which does the most damage. Do you agree to a deal with a government that is denying agreed rights to your citizens abroad? Or is there more political damage from being blamed for triggering a no deal Brexit? Um, I suspect that the latter is going to hold true and that the deal will be ratified. It just seems the safer option for MEPs to do so, but it might be interesting in the event of a significant split in the vote, whichever way it goes, to see which nation's MEPs and from which parties do vote against the deal. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time... I'll see you later.